I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore, and here is the picture. Joe Biden making a surprise visit to Ukraine, the capital of Kiev, meeting with Zelensky. Here they are doing a little photo op as some air sirens go off. I don't know why air sirens are going off when Biden is there. There's no way Russia is bombing that. And I'm sure actually Russia was informed beforehand just to make sure they wouldn't bomb when the president of the United States was there, unless we want to start World War III. And here is Biden announcing or touting his latest military assistance package to Ukraine. President, military, economic, and humanitarian support. We united the leading economies of the world to impose unprecedented costs that are squeezing Russia's economic lifelines. Together, we've committed nearly 700 tanks and thousands of armored vehicles, 1,000 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, more than 50 advanced launch rocket systems, anti-ship and air defense systems, all defend you to defend Ukraine, and that doesn't count. The other half a billion dollars we're going to be we're announcing with you today and tomorrow that's going to be coming your way. And that's just the United States in this piece. And just today, that announcement includes artillery ammunition for HIMARS and howitzers, more javelins, anti-armor systems, air surveillance radars to help protect Ukrainian people. So that's President Biden. Let me bring in now our first guest, Uh, retired Colonel Douglas McGregor. He is a former senior advisor at the Pentagon. Doug McGregor, thanks for joining us on the Jimmy Dore Show. Happy to be here. What do you make of uh, Biden's visit to Kiev and this list of weapons that he just rattled off? Well, I don't know about you, but I was enormously impressed with the slow, unhurried walk across the square (laughs) next to Zelensky towards the memorial wall in the midst of the fake air raid. I really thought the fake air raid was a wonderful addition to the climate. (laughs) Certainly enhanced his uh, combativeness and uh, commander-in-chief status. And he's there now. Uh, This is a surprise visit. Uh, It's billed as somehow being high risk, even though I think it's safe to assume that Russia was told about this. what do you make of uh, him going there on the first anniversary of the war? And, and how is the war going from the U.S. point of view? Well, well, first of all, Aaron, I can't imagine the Russians doing anything to President Biden. Biden is doing all sorts of things that are very damaging to us, to our allies, uh, to our interests. Uh, Russia is certainly not being hurt. And I thought the list of fantasy equipment that is not likely to be seen, certainly for months, if ever, Uh, was an interesting list. I mean, 700 tanks, that's uh, at least 200 more or 300 more than the Ukrainians asked for. Uh, I don't know that there'll be anybody around by the time these things arrive to actually man them, although there's talk about lots of NATO troops becoming mercenaries under Ukrainian command to go do that. We'll see. But, But on the whole, you know, 500 million, I mean, what's a half a billion dollars when you have thousands of people whose lives and livelihood is being ruined in Ohio, and you have massive open borders with tens of thousands of people about whom we know absolutely nothing, including lots of Chinese spies, I'm sure, who are much more effective than the silly balloon that got lost. So, you know, the, the whole thing is is, is a travesty. And I, I hope that uh, at some point someone wakes up in Washington and figures this out, because if it's 500 million, I would think at least... 50 to 100 million of that will uh, disappear into various bank accounts in Cyprus belonging to Zelensky and thousands of his supporters. You know, Doug, I'm not someone who shares your concerns about Chinese spies or open borders. I I favor open borders, but I am concerned about this war. And it's now one year in, and we've been told for so long that Ukraine is routing Russia, that Russia is on its back heels. What from your vantage point, is the reality of this war that we're not getting here in the U.S.? Well, the reality is that the Ukrainian position is uh, deeply disturbing. We now think that it may be up to 200,000 dead on the Ukrainian side, plus another three or 400,000 wounded. 
uh, they're starting to force anyone who is still breathing, who is male, into uniform. I mean, I've seen videos not only of 15, 16-year-old boys being shoved at gunpoint into vans to be taken away and sent to the front, but now even old men, people over 50, 60, 70 years of age, who are completely unfit for combat. So it's clear that the Ukrainians are scraping the bottom of that barrel because they don't have much population left, Aaron. Uh, they started this at war maybe at 37.4 million. We think that after everyone has left the country, uh, large numbers of people have been killed or wounded. They have maybe a population of 20 to 22 million people left from which they can draw on. And people aren't rushing to go to the front. I mean, the life expectancy uh, on the front against the Russians right now is supposedly three to four hours for any new recruit. So it's, it's virtually a death sentence. Russia, on the other hand, is now stronger than it's been in decades. Its armed forces are enormous. It's mobilized these reservists. They're trained. They're ready. Uh, what, what you see happening on the ground is this crumbling defense in uh, southern Ukraine on the Ukrainian side and cleanup operations, literally to clear paths and lanes through the crumbling defenses to launch about 250,000 combat troops into northern Ukraine and finish off uh, ever, essentially everything that's east of the Dnieper River. So what message, if any, do you think Biden sent to Zelensky when he came to Kiev to visit? Do you think that there's U.S. pressure on Ukraine to mount some sort of new offensive to make it appear as if Ukraine can retake territory and uh, and hurt Russia? Well, I think they talk in those terms. Uh, you, you hear those wild statements about retaking Crimea or parts of eastern Ukraine all the time, but there's no basis in fact. There's nothing with which to do it. Uh, I, I think Zelensky is being told to stay the course, keep it up, do what you're doing, we'll continue to support you. Now, how long can that go on? Well, once this offensive really takes off, I think a lot of people in Washington are going to reconsider. I think there's going to be a lot of reconsideration in Europe. I mean, if you, you look at the European side of the house, these, these people are in terrible condition. And our friend uh, Macron in France has now said publicly, we, we need to drop this whole business about regime change, stop talking about defeating Russia. But then he goes around and says, well, we have to continue to support Ukraine. The Germans, who are key to all of this, they're apoplectic. They, they don't have a government. No one there is leading them anywhere. And the, the polls across Europe are clear. The vast majority of Europeans want a negotiated end to the settlement. So when you say, what's next? I don't know how much longer this can go on because I don't know how much longer Ukraine can hold out. And I don't know how many more refugees uh, the Europeans can take and, and what damage their economies can sustain. It's hard to know. Doing live stand-up comedy in Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Nashville, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, and Hartford, Connecticut. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets and become a premium member. Get access to all our content.